All right, evening folks. Um, today I thought I'd try something a little bit different. And I don't know how many people are aware of it or not, but it's one of my little hobbies. And that is homebrewing. So the first thing I would say is that I do not condone in any way people drinking and riding. Should not be done. I don't even touch a pint before going out somewhere or other. Very strict on that. Might have a beer if I drive, will not have a beer if I ride. That out of the way, I'm going to go through a bit of tutorial of how easy it really is to do. So the things that you need are four gallon fermentation bin is technically called. You probably need some, I use this stuff, so sterilizer cleaner type stuff. It's just a powder, you mix it with water. Um, you will need some tubing, some lids, stirring stick. Um, you will need your brew kits. Now you can do these things from scratch, so you can buy malt and all this type of thing and make this yourself, so it's purely yours, but I always buy these kits. Um, this particular kit doesn't need sugar adding to it, but I buy lager kits as well, where you have to add a kilogram of sugar in order for it to, to work and ferment, but these ones don't need it. Um, this is basically Dasher the Flasher, which is a Christmas brew, and I also have Donner and Blitzed, which is another one of my favourites. I'm doing these for Christmas, basically. Um, I also use um, spring water rather than tap water, just because I think it makes it nicer, to be honest. The other thing I've got on the go at the minute is a pan of hot water, which will come in handy later. Um, I'm going to fill the sink up as well with hot water, but first of all, I need to sterilise these bad boys using the VWP. Um, I've already boiled the kettle as well, so it's handy. Always have a nice Christmas coffee on hand because I find that helps and some music in the background. That's purely optional, those two, but they're my personal favorites. So first thing to do in reality with the pan of hot water on, sip of coffee, is to get this stuff sterilized because what you don't want is all the nasty bacteria that's basically in the air and around the place affecting the brew that you put in with the, the mineral water. I mean all this type of stuff is all nicely sterilized as it is. I don't want to go putting crappy bacteria in with that lot and spoiling the brew because you'll end up with a big thick sludge of crap on top of it. I have had it happen. Um, best thing to do, sterilize it. This stuff is brilliant. If you're struggling to clean things, not just from a brew point of view, put a tablespoon of that in, I don't know, a, a cup that's been stained with tea. Leave it overnight, pour it out, and the tea just dissolves away. This stuff, brilliant, whether it's for brew or not. So, that out of the way, I'm gonna put that up there. Let's get sterilizing. So, I'm gonna run some hot water. And we'll get some of this, and we'll put that in there as well. So, that's VWP. It's just stuff, it's just a powder. That's all it is, powder. So that should be reasonably hot because I had it running earlier. We need that sterilizing. We also need these things sterilizing. I've got a spare one down there, you'll notice. But, um, we need these sterilizing as well. So first port of call is actually to probably fill these up with water and sterilize those. They look fairly clean, but that isn't clean enough for brewing, trust me. Right, so. This stuff does say, uh, da -da 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 see worktop fringe bowls, one tablespoon for half a gallon of water. It says the leaves to soak for one, two hours, but to be honest, 15, 20 minutes of this stuff is good enough for what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, one to two teaspoons of a gallon of warm water. Those things are about a gallon each. So essentially you don't need a lot of it. So what we're going to do is put one, two, three, one for luck. One, two, and three. Next thing to do is just fill them up with water. It's as easy as that. So we have... I 
reckon that will probably do it. Right, leave those bad boys for 15 minutes. They're sterilised. Here's a good little tip for you. Flasher the flasher. This is the one we're going to do first. So inside one of these kits, you get yeast. That's what turns the sugar into your booze, effectively. Um, some instructions, whatever, done this enough. Empty cans. That is what they call the wart. So you can make that yourself, or you can buy one of these and make it. Typically, this kit will do 40 pints. And that was 25 quid, I think it was. So it's, it's a decent deal. And it is much cheaper than the thing. And to be honest, I like this stuff. I mean, the, it comes out at, I don't know, 50 pence a pint. Less than that, I suspect. Um, I'll work it out at some point. If not, later on when I'm actually cutting the video. But um, these things are basically like syrup. So when you pour, you basically add water into these fermentation buckets, along with one of these and your yeast, stir it around and leave it for two weeks to ferment. Job done. That is like syrup, like golden syrup. Easiest way to get all of that out, heat it up to begin with. That's my little tip for you. Once you open those up with a can opener, they will pour straight out and just use a bit of hot water over a kettle or something like that, swill it around the cans and pour them into the, the water. It's all job done. So, right, so in reality, I've got all of this going. I need to wait 15 minutes for this to do before we can empty it. So I'll, uh, I'll cut you back in a little bit. 15 minutes has passed. Um, I haven't really touched anything. I've got a pair of scissors out and a can opener. Scissors for that, can opener for them. Fairly simple. Um, other than that, we just need to empty these and properly rinse them before we do anything else. So I'm going to need the sink, unfortunately. Just fill the sink, and the idea is just to get all the VWP off this stuff so that you don't affect your brew. And then just rinse the fermentation bucket. my bottles filled with different brews at the minute but using these I normally store the beer in because you've got to let it to mature first um, so once we finish this part of the process you meant to leave it for two weeks we meant to do hydrometer checks and all this type of thing I don't really bother with it anymore um, but then I fill the beer up in these and just chuck them in the back cave out there for I don't know months as long as they're really well the longer the better in reality the more time you give a beer to mature the more likely it is to come back around and be a nicer beer. Um, so I fill it up with these, turn the top on, I leave them out there for God knows how long, and I'll go through again how I empty these things and actually use it for brew, because there are various different ways of doing it. Um, got my preferred way, there are others. Um, but yeah, generally then, once these are empty, um, you'll find a lot of crap sinking to the bottom afterwards, even when they're maturing. Um, so. Generally, the BWP solution that's in these, I fill back up in these and sterilise these for the next batch. But um, I am going free at the minute, so this stuff is just going down the sink, basically. Yeah, we'll call that. Right, so make sure he's out of water. Chuck him on the side and he's ready. Keep, uh, give this another rinse. So there we have one sterilised bucket and a spoon for stirring it with, basically. So, next process is actually to get that out of there and pour it in there, I think. And add a bit of cold, cold warm water to it, so... Turn that down a little bit. Essentially what we are doing is taking this stuff putting it in this, adding a bit of hot water, filling it up with cold, putting the yeast in, stirring it, job done. So let's crack on with that. Take our wart. And fill it up. Or at least 
take the top off and you'll soon see how this stuff looks. stinks too. It's not necessarily a nice smell but there you go. You can see that that is proper syrup and that's why you heat it up to begin with. Um, so what I am going to do actually is take our newly, knew that would come in handy, and this is what the boil pan of water for. Hot water, one litre, two litre, four litres out of loop. Now not only does that help the wart become unjellified, if that's a word, um, put that on, um, yeah not only does the hot water from the pan in there help mix this up more, um, it brings the temperature of that water that you put it in up to about 20 to 25 degrees which then doesn't kill the yeast. Anything lower this whole thing has to heat up for the yeast to work. Any higher you kill the yeast. So you want this around 25 degrees. Four litres of water plus now uh, there'll be a bit of kettle water in there to help rinse that out plus that brings it up to the temperature. I know this I've done it before hence the reason I don't take temperature readings but you should take a temperature reading before you put yeast in to make sure that it's in that right zone and you don't kill it or it's not so cold that the fermentation doesn't work. So let's carry on with this. I tilt you up to begin with. Right, taking wort and pouring it in. You can see how thick that really is. And taking your stick you can stir. mix it up. Probably steaming up there, aren't yeah. And that's all we're doing. Normally, well with some kits you would put your sugar in there as well, but with this one there's just no need for sugar. The wall already has sugar mixed in it. So what we can do, put that one back in there. There's no need for him to be out, is there? Let's take the kettle water, fill this up, and that helps get the remainder of this out of the can. Like that. Bump. And you can see it's almost completely gone. So, try get as much out as possible. Problem is this can becomes very hot. Not much left in that one, we'll call that one. Give it another quick stir. And I can already feel that it's not so viscous. That's the word I'm looking for. Give that mix around. So, same thing, this one. So, again, thick gloop into water. Too bad, it's quite a lot out of that. <sighs> well, this is all stirred in, or at least as unviscous as you can possibly get it. Vigorous stirring is needed. Right, there you go. Now you can see on these 25 litres. So, next thing to do use your water. 
and pull. Easy as that. Probably not so viciously, otherwise you get it all over your work surface. Now, whilst I have used proper spring water here, well, Tesco's finest spring water, um, the water that I did put in that pan was just tap water. You can use tap water, it's just my choice not to use as much of it as possible. Incidentally, if you wanted stronger beer, don't put as much water in. The sugar is what dictates the alcohol level. So generally all kits come with put a kilogram of sugar in, or these particular ones are already pre-made. The likelihood is they've got a kilogram of sugar in. If you want the beer stronger, put more sugar in. It's as simple as that. Um, so if you actually, well, put more sugar in with 25 litres, you get a stronger beer. Put less water in, there's still the same amount of sugar in there, you'll get a stronger beer. It's the way that it works, and somehow I've managed to cut myself. Well then me. Job done. That is all we need. Right, had a look for a thermometer, doesn't exist, but I have found that, which is quite interesting. Um, this one's slightly different, this is for spirits more than anything. Not that I've ever made spirits, because that would be bootlegging and that's illegal. So, um, <coughs> uh, this is basically a hydrometer. So what you can do, is if you want to know the per uh, exact percentage of this, if you take a reading now, you take what's called the gravity reading, so the OG, or original gravity. Then, once this is done fermenting in two, three weeks time, whatever it is, um, the warmer it is, the shorter the fermentation period, so you've got to check it every now and again. Um, you take the final gravity reading, and then you compare the two, and you can put it into like a little calculator business. I might put the formula up, it's not very complicated, um, and you can see exactly what percentage your beer is at. I don't bother anymore, to be honest. And um, they all come out roughly between four and five. That's what the standard kits are meant to do. And um, generally, there is something on the kit which will say roughly what it should be, I think. No, uh, there's nothing on that. That's just other beers. No. Yeah, no sugar required. Makes 40 pints. Made with premium barley. Yeah, there's nothing on there that says it, but we've done it before. I can say I've been doing this for years. I don't even bother taking a reading anymore. It's generally about four and a half. Um, but you can use one of those to, to measure it accurately if you wanted to. Can't be asked any longer, I just drink a beer. Right, so that's stirred in. Next thing is to add the yeast. Now some of this say... Right, yeah. So some of the, this one, for example, here, I don't know whether you can see this or not, Sprinkle onto surface of prepared beer wort, no need to stir. Some of them stir in, others don't stir in, so this one's just sprinkle over the top. I don't think it really makes too much of a difference whether you do or don't, but I like to follow the instructions. So, sprinkle it on top. Put as neatly as possible. And that is that, literally done. I'll stick that next to a radiator, and it'll be two weeks, I suspect. And then I'll basically filter it off using the pipe that we were in, that had in there, into those bottles. And then I'll stick it on the side for basically as long as I can. Um, generally, at least a month. Um, however, you could go shorter, it could go longer. I generally find that these premium kits take a month, um, at least longer the better to be honest but what you'll find then is when I put the lid on there this will well, the lid will expand and basically all the gases the co2 and things like that from the yeast eating the sugar will escape it you'll get a big froth on the top and you'll get all the crud to the bottom then it's either ready for a keg well it, I use two different types of kegs um, you've got a normal round keg with a tap on the bottom or what I've got is called a corny keg, which is a silver keg about that big. Might do some of this in a bit, actually. Nothing difficult about brewing your own beer if you're gonna do it using the kits. Making that stuff is the most, is the hardest part of it, and I don't bother doing it. These kits are great. And for 25 quid, I get 40 pints of beer. I think the Australian or Cooper Lager kit that we use is, from Tesco's, you can generally get it between 11 and 12 quid. 
um, and that will do 40 pints again, even cheaper. Um, I just like the, the premium beer stuff. But it's as simple as that, folks. Um, Dasher the Flasher. So I know what it is. <laughs> so there we go, folks. Dasher the Flasher, Bona and Blitzed. But it's as simple as that, folks. Um, whether I follow this up with another one or not, I'm not quite sure. But um, happy days. Got any questions, post them down below. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you soon. Laters.